Hello, I'm Brian Fitzgerald, the Golf Doctor, and today I'm going to talk to you about hitting better chip shots around the green. So we're going to put the ball in different situations uh, around the green, and we'll see how I would handle that and how I would choose the shot that I play. So here we have the first one, uh, undulating ground. The green is raised about one and a half metres above where I'm standing at the moment little downhill to the flag, but really there's not a lot of problems the other side of the flag. If I'm going to err, I would prefer to be a little long on this one than to play another one from down here. So in every chip shot situation, we've got four options. We can putt it, we can hit a little chip, a chip and run, we can chip it on the edge and let it run down, or we can hit a pitch shot. So I'm going to say that, yeah, I could probably putt it. It's been raining overnight, it's a little wet. There is a steep embankment and this area over here is a little bit thick. So probably for that reason, I wouldn't putt. Would I play the pitch shot? I could, but it's a very tight lie and the ground is a little bit damp. So if I went for that pitch shot, I'm going to risk hitting the ball a bit fat. And if I hit it fat, it's going to land on the edge of that bank and run back down. Then I've got the same shot again. So can I chip it on the edge of the green and let it run down? Yeah, I probably could. But for the same reason, I've got to hit it in the air a reasonable amount. There's probably about eight paces or thereabouts to get from here to the edge. And the, the pin isn't, that's probably another five paces further on. So for me to land this ball on the edge of the green from here, it's gonna have a fair amount of momentum and that's gonna carry the ball a little bit too far. So for that reason, I am going to play a, a, a running shot, a chip and run. Even though that embankment is pretty steep, I know what's gonna to happen to the golf ball, it's gonna kill the speed. So. As long as I hit the ball pretty firmly, it's going to get up there and the grass is thick, but it's not all thick. It's just one little patch. So I'm going to select my hybrid for this shot. So it's going to be downhill. The main thing here is that I just hit the ball, making sure that I have enough momentum to carry it up that slope. If I'm going to be honest, I'm not gonna really think about getting this too close. I hope to get it too close, but the main objective from here is let's get this on the green so I can then use my putter for the next one. Because if you're, if you're really honest, how many times are you gonna get down in two from here? A small percentage of the time. So what we don't wanna do is make sure that I chip it down up on the bank, come down here, then I've got another one because then I'm gonna get down in four. I wanna make sure that the worst case is however many I'm here for, I want to get it on and two putt. If I get it on, I'm a chance of a one putt, but I want to make sure I two putt. So uh, that's my logic behind this shot. So I just grip down on the hybrid. You could use a five iron or a three iron if you wanted to. I just think the hybrid is a really good choice. So I hit that pretty firm. It took a big skip up there. It's on the green. It's probably about a good six or seven paces from the flag. Probably the worst case scenario. That's about as bad a shot as I could play. At least I've got my putter out for the next one. So remember, we're trying to reduce strokes. We're trying to reduce as many strokes as we can the easiest way possible. So by me doing that, unless I three putt it, I'm gonna get down in two more shots from there. Okay, so now I'm gonna play from the same position, but we're gonna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna say that this grass is a little bit too thick, so I can't really run it up, and that happens from time to time. So this is pretty firm, even though it's been raining, it's, it's hard pan, finely cut. So I'm gonna get my lob wedge out, and the reason I'm choosing my lob wedge is I don't want the bounce to bounce too far behind the ball. I want to try and have the minimum amount of bounce that I can. 
So the lob wedge offers me that. I'm also going to try and keep my angle of attack quite shallow. If I start hitting downwards and increase my angle of attack, that's bringing the fat shot into play. So if I can keep this relatively shallow, it really is giving me the best opportunity of getting this out. So we'll see how I go with this one. So I hit that pretty well, made sure I didn't get too cute with it. That's actually finished outside the first one. So I like the safety of that little hybrid shot, but even that one, that's about as bad a shot as I could have played other than hitting it fat. And I've still got two putts from there. So we'll go to a different place now and we'll see what options we have. Okay, here we are in a slightly different situation and the green is still raised but where my ball is sitting, there's a lot more thicker grass. Where this bank is, it's also a lot thicker and it's wet. I still have a similar amount of green to work with, and as I look at it, there really isn't any trouble long. As long as I don't, there is a bunker over there, but it's gotta be really, really, really long for that bunker to come into play. So I look at it and think, where don't I wanna play the next shot? Well, I don't wanna play from the bunker, but I don't think there's much chance of me getting it in the bunker from here. I certainly don't want to have this shot over again. So if I miss hit, I'm going to miss hit on the long side. So the four options again, I can putt it. Yeah, probably not. There's this clump of grass here that the ball's going to hit and who knows what's going to happen. It might jump up, it might go through, we don't know. Uh, the bank's even steeper than the last shot. It's thicker, it's wetter, putting's not a good option, nor is the hybrid shot that I just played before. So now I'm left with a shot of chipping it, landing it on the edge of the green, which I could do. The problem with that is if I miss hit that slightly, I don't have much green to work with there. And if I do miss hit it, the ball's gonna run down back at my feet. So for that reason, I'm gonna use a type of pitch shot or a bit more loft. So I'm gonna use my 55 degree sand wedge this time. I could use my 60, but I think 55 is good and I'm gonna err on the long side. So if I leave it short, I'm gonna have a downhill putt for my next one. At least if I hit it past, I'm gonna have an uphill putt. So I'd pre always prefer to have an uphill than a downhill putt. It's not severe, but these are the sorts of things that I think of when I'm chipping. So it's not a, not a total pitch. There's not a lot of wrist action in this, but it's sort of a bit of a hybrid between a chip and a pitch. But I am gonna land it on the putting surface. I want to give myself a good chance of if I miss hit it, it's still going to land up there and it's going to be okay. So that's my process. I've got a tuft of grass behind the ball there, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I do want to think about my length of swing. I'm not going to be very wristy and handsy. I'm going to keep it reasonably firm, but there will be a softening of the hands when I play the shot. So that's landed on the edge of the green there, and that's run down into about oh, 14 inches from the hole. Very happy with the way I played it. So there wasn't a big divot. My club got under the ball. I had enough energy that if I did miss hit it, it would land just short of the green there. And I think that gives me the best chance to play that shot. So here we have the next shot. So with, with this particular shot, I've got a bit of undulation, a little bit of uphill to start with, then it goes downhill. So it's cut fairly finely here, a little bit thicker down on the downslope. Then we've got the green and then it's downhill to the flag from here. So can I pitch it? Yep, absolutely, I can pitch it and land it on. It's a bit of a tight lie again. So whilst that's an option, I don't know that that's the best option. Can I putt it? Yeah, I probably could putt it from here. So that's definitely an option. Can I hit it with a little hybrid or a little chip and run shot? Yeah, I could probably do that too. But this time I'm going to play a shot that lands just on the down slope here of this mound. So it's gonna be a chip and run type shot and I'm gonna let the ball run down toward the flag. So for this one, I'm going to play with my gap wedge.
So I don't want to land this on the upslope. If I do, it's going to be a bad result. I just want to land it just on the downslope. I know it's going to kick off the downslope and then it's going to run down toward the flag. As I look at it, it's okay if I leave it short. I don't want to be too long because there's a bit of an embankment there and if I go over the edge, that's going to be a tricky one. So I don't really want to hit it too far past, but I do have a little bit of green to work with. So this is my, uh, my little chip and run with a gap wedge. I could use a sand wedge, but as I've said in another video, lofted clubs are best left alone. This is a wedge, but I need to because if I go down to a nine iron, it's going to kick a bit firm and that puts me over the back. So this is one of those situations I would definitely chip with a kind of wedge. So I pick out my landing area. I then think about what length of swing I need to land on that area. And then I'm hitting this focusing on the landing area, not the flagstick. Landed perfectly. There it runs down. Just gathered a little bit more speed than I would have liked. So that's probably about four paces beyond the flag, which I'm not too unhappy about. It's not as close as I'd like. Copped a bit of a bad bounce, but whenever you land it in these situations, it's always difficult to know exactly how hard it's gonna run. But that was with my gap wedge. So imagine if I had have chipped that with my, with my nine iron, it probably would have gone over the back. So that's one of those situations where you do, I would encourage you to use a wedge, one of the rare situations. So I said before I wouldn't putt from here, I'm gonna have a go at putting from here and we'll just see how it goes. So there are always four options, as I said. You can usually just count a couple of them pretty quickly. But in this case, once I get it up the top of this little hill here in front of me, it's downhill the rest of the way. So balls tend to roll downhill. I know there is going to be momentum. So I've just got to hit it hard enough to get over the crest and then let it go down there from, for the rest. So we'll see how I go with it. So it's just trickled on. And that's probably about four paces short of the hole. And that's the problem with, with this putt, is it's very hard to know how it's gonna go over a couple of these different surfaces. So there's actually three different sorts of surfaces that I'm going over and different heights of grass to get the ball on the green. But once again, that's not a bad spot. I can get the next one in. Worst case is I'm down here in three shots. And that's what you always wanna do. Make sure you're down in three, hopefully get down in two, and that way you're gonna find you get better. So hopefully that's cleared up my process on how I select different shots. I'd love to know if that's the process that you go through, and I would always encourage you to get out here on the golf course and put your ball down here and play all four shots, even if you know two of them are wrong. Play all four and then just build up your database of learning and then you'll be able to recreate that on the golf course. When you have that situation, you'll say, gee, I tried that in practice last week and it didn't work with this club. But I had really good success with this club and that's, that's what we do. And that's what golf pros do when you see them on TV. They've got this fantastic database in their head that they recall shots that they've hit in the past and they can hit with confidence. So thank you for letting me help you with your golf. I'm Brian Fitzgerald, the Golf Doctor, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.